Well, good morning. Hey, thank you guys for joining us on Daily Bread. It's a great time. Hey, listen, early in the morning, this is a great time to get everything focused and everything uh, that you're going to have to deal with that day. It comes through the presence and the, I would say the fellowship offering that takes place between you and Daddy God, the Holy Spirit, every morning. So God bless you guys. Thank you for meeting us here and Daily Bread uh, again from all of us uh, all the way back. I always thank you guys for being here. And uh, there are many of you from all over now watching. And uh, that's just a miracle work of Almighty God. So I thank you for being here. Uh, last week, we talked to you guys about, uh, you know, the, the access that the enemy has in us to cause us to use our mouths in this form of what we call gossiping, all right, uh, throughout uh, started when we were younger, you know, when you were in school, get buddies, all that stuff and whatever. And, and uh, uh, I didn't get a whole lot of response from people last week about that particular lesson because most people don't, don't understand that the invisible world, okay, just like our visible world that we have, the visible world out there is really influencing your everyday movements, uh, your lifestyles, and so what I want to do this week is to uh, get into some of the things that really reveal, right, the, the pretty much some basic things in spiritual warfare that many people are unaware of. You know, even, even Christian people, when I, you know, and I say this about me, no, it's not you, uh, but when I grew up, uh, there wasn't a lot of talk about the invisible world unless it was something that people brought up about the devil. The devil was doing this, the devil was doing this. And I've seen both worlds, believe me, okay? And in being in ministry, you know, for the last 30 some years, I've seen uh, the reality of that invisible world influencing people, you know? So whenever we bring up subjects like, you know, gossip, it's because that world is, in, I would say, injecting certain things into you to come against God's program, okay? And, uh, and so because of your position as a believer, the enemy is very, very attentive to what you do, okay? Especially when you pray, okay? Because he knows that prayer is a power that just annihilates any work that he's doing, okay? But there are many other things that he watch us, and he's very particular about you as a believer uh, doing certain things and helping other people to understand the Word of God. So let's talk about this, uh, the, these, some of these things about spiritual warfare that maybe... Maybe you haven't. I don't know. You might be a new Christian. Uh, maybe you're new to Daily Bread. I, I don't know, uh, you know who, who's out there watching us every day, uh, but I do know what the Word of God says and how we should study the Word to show ourselves approved unto God, not unto men, but unto God. And God reveals things to us, okay? So let's look at some of the things that the Bible say about this invisible world. And then we'll go from this invisible world to some of the things that the enemy may be bringing against you and whatever, because I do know he works against God's program, okay? And I'll say something about that, some of the things that he does, okay? Come on, go with me to 2 Kings chapter 6. And this is where uh, we'll start this particular lesson. Now, again, spiritual warfare, all right? It involves both worlds, and both, both worlds are mentioned in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, okay? So there's no getting around it because, you know, you can't walk around and stick your head in the sand and say, well, this is just the world I live in and whatever. No, 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 no. If your eyes begin to be really open as a believer, you really begin to see a lot of the things that that world of darkness is bringing in and manipulating people's lives and causing a lot of things to happen. In uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, you ought to be there by now, uh, the king of Syria uh, warred against Israel. You can begin this in verse 8. And it says, uh, uh, Elisha was always telling the king of Israel where not to, you know, where not to go, where not to go, where not to go, you know, watch out for this place because he's going to be there in an the ambushment. And the man wanted to know if there was a spy in his own camp telling, <laughs> telling the king of Israel what was going on. And one of his servants said, no, uh, Elisha was there and he knew the things that was going on. See, so even said, I know, Elisha knows the things that are going on in your bedroom, okay? Now that's a whole lot of knowledge, okay? All right, so we pick this up in uh, verse 13. And he said, go and spy. Now this is the king of Syria. He said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And uh, it was told him saying that he was in Dothan. And so therefore he sent there the horses and chariots, all right? A great host and they came by night 
and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and he went forth, behold, a host uh, compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. All right? And these are natural horses and chariots from this army, from this uh, king of Syria. And his servant said unto to Elisha, alas my, alas, my master, how shall we do? In other words, he could see all of this. And he was afraid. He was going like, oh, man, this man's going, he's going to take everybody, kill everybody, whatever. He's finally caught up with us. And, uh, and he answered and said, now, now check this out now, because this is, these are always the first words that the Lord sends to us. All right? He always brings forth peace, not fear. Okay? He says, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, in the natural, again, this guy's looking around. He's seen, he, he seen all these thousands of horses and men and whatever. You know, he's looking around in the natural, and he's going like, uh, uh, what did you say? <laughs> they that be with us are more than they that are against us? Come on now. Come on here. Come on. Come on now. Well, see, he has to realize, all right, and, and you have to realize that there are things every day, not sometimes, all right, not seasonal, you know, not a hit and miss thing. There are things every day that the, that the kingdom of darkness brings against you because of who you are, because you are a tremendous threat to any successful thing that he might be able to accomplish through people who do not know him, all right? And it says, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, all right, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he might see. See what? And the Lord opened his eyes, opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all about Elisha. All right? All about him. So it's showing you that there are two worlds right here in these scriptures. All right? The seen world and the invisible world. Okay? Just using this one little scripture, Elisha said, open up his eyes so that he might see. And the Lord opened up his eyes so that he might see. Well, this is the same thing that the Holy Spirit does with us today. All right? He opens our eyes so that we might see what's going on around us. Now, we might get a picture. We might get a, a movie picture. We might get a vision. We might get whatever. But he's here to help you and I to see both worlds so that we might follow him in the direction through this dark world that the blessings and, the, and I would say the benefits of the world that we don't live in most of the time, that those things might come into our life. So let's check it out this week and let's talk about this. Uh, these aspects of spiritual warfare and understanding both worlds. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you here tomorrow on Daily Bread.